This video shall present a basic understanding of the role of chemotherapy and chemoradiotherapy in pancreatic cancer. This figure shows a basic sketch. The liver over here with the bile tube coming out of it and the gallbladder on the side. The pancreas gland lies at the back of the stomach over here and in the head of the pancreas I've drawn a tumour of the head of the pancreas. Pancreatic cancer is a dreadful disease and it is the leading cause of cancer related death worldwide. Only 10% of patients will receive life-saving surgery. Patients ha may have symptoms for months before they are diagnosed. And investigations for diagnosis include scans such as ultrasound, CT, MRI and CT PET scan and dust such as endoscopic ultrasound and ERCP. So what is chemotherapy and how does this fit into the treatment of pancreatic cancer? Let's look into that. Chemotherapy is the use of drugs or medication to treat cancer. This can be given through the mouth but are commonly injected through the vein. Chemotherapy works by killing cancer cells because these divide quite rapidly and chemotherapy is toxic thus affecting all tissue that is propagating at a fast pace and thus reducing its growth. As mentioned it is usually given through the vein. Commonly chemotherapy once given has such strong effect that patients are given rest days between doses. Each dose followed by its rest phase is called a cycle of treatment. Treatment several cycles make up a course of chemotherapy. Commonly for pancreatic cancer this lasts up to six months. For chemotherapy to be deployed, it is important that patients have a basic degree of fitness and if surgery has not been performed, a biopsy is essential. A biopsy gains tissue from the cancer itself, thus confirming the diagnosis. This diagram shows a tumor cell which is dividing very rapidly. In this case, it has divided into three cells and these may go on to divide indefinitely. Chemotherapy medication affects these and essentially will kill off the majority but not all of them. Cancer cells are not regulated as opposed to other tissue within the body that is also rapidly dividing such as hair follicles, the lining of the mouth and the gastrointestinal tract etc. Chemotherapy may be deployed before surgery and this approach is called neoadjuvant. Chemotherapy alone or in combination with radiotherapy is deployed in tumors that are advanced and in close proximity to blood vessels as drawn over here. I have drawn some dots in the liver to indicate microscopic metastases. These cannot be seen with scans or detected by any means at all. They're present is assumed in this patient performing surgery would not remove the tumor in its, in its entirety because of its anatomic location right next to the blood vessel and the hope is that once chemotherapy is given tumor would drink away from the blood vessel as well as get rid of the micrometastases thus allowing surgery to take place and ensuring complete removal of the tumor this approach is called neoadjuvant chemotherapy it is sometimes combined with radiotherapy and called chemoradiotherapy. Adjuvant chemotherapy is given after surgery and after removal of the tumor. Ideally this should be given within eight weeks to have the maximum benefit. Chemotherapy is also given for patients who are not candidates for surgery and in this instance the role is supportive to improve quality of life and prolong survival. Chemotherapy has side effects because of its generalized action on body cells and these include but are not limited to nausea and vomiting, loss of appetite, diarrhea and constipation, a propensity to infections, it may suppress the bone marrow and may also affect the blood's ability to clot, thus resulting in bruising and bleeding. There may be skin, hair and nail changes. The nerves may be affected, causing tingling sensation or alteration of the perception of sensation. Sleep memory concentration may be affected. There is undoubted benefit in large randomized trials in improving survival in resected pancreatic cancer. Hence, for all patients who've had pancreatic cancer removed with surgery, there is undoubted improvement in longevity and hence for future patients they will remain candidates for treatment options which are most relevant at the time. So what about radiotherapy? Radiotherapy are external beams of intense radiation such as a very high dose of x-rays and in this picture I have drawn a source that produces radiotherapy and is affecting the pancreatic cancer. Radiotherapy is combined with chemotherapy, usually in the preoperative phase for advanced tumors. The, ra the way radiotherapy is delivered is improving all the time. It is much more focused and there is less and less collateral damage and the hope is that combining radiotherapy with chemotherapy will improve the outcomes for pancreatic cancer in terms of cancer not coming back from the areas where it has been removed. In conclusion, chemotherapy after surgery prolongs survival and in 
and improves cure rates. New adjuvant chemotherapy, that is chemotherapy given before surgery, is still evolving and increasingly deployed in cancers that are advanced or involve major blood vessels. The role of radiotherapy along with chemotherapy is being examined. It is being used combined with chemotherapy in patients with advanced cancers before surgery. Chemotherapy in its supportive role for patients who are not candidates for surgery is also evolving. There is increased survival with the current regimens, however at times at the price of increased toxicity and side effects. I hope you found this talk useful. If you have any comments, please do share.